give him a clap. He will then, in turn, welcome the Cabinet Secretary. Welcome, sir. Thank you uh, very much. I also believe I'm innovative. I hope that that is true. Your Excellency, our President, our CS, Kipchumba um, Murkomen, um, all protocols observed. It is great to see such a great and eclectic mix of innovators, visionaries, investors, academia, government, what makes really the triple helix of the startup ecosystem gathered here today to celebrate innovation um, in our country. I remember a few years back um, as a member of parliament in 2015, I was in Palo Alto, which is a charter city in uh, Santa Clara, California, what they call the Silicon Valley. And I was speaking at the Institute for the Future. And in that meeting, there's a lady from Argentina who, or, or Brazil, one of those countries, who asked a very deep question. She asked, why is it that we're seeing so much innovation coming from Kenya and East Africa, yet we thought we would be ahead in the United States? It took me a minute to think about, but I realized that actually it is where the world was moving to. At that point, the whole world was celebrating innovation on, in money transfer, in supporting farmers and all that. And I was able to tell her, look, the world, of course, a global village driven by technology and innovation. The same tools the young people have in San Francisco or in Italy are the same tools that young people you know, have or are, you know, is available to our young people in Kenya and in Africa, but the need is different. And necessity is the mother of invention. And so I explained that while they may be innovating for now luxury issues, because they've sorted a lot of their basic things, so shopping lines and apps, what we're innovating for in Africa and in Kenya is to connect families. It is, you know, sending money to your grandmother. It is water solutions. And that is why there's more meaningful innovation coming out of the continent. The potential is great in Kenya. The potential is great in Africa. Your Excellency, in 1950, the population of Europe was 22% of the world, and that of Africa was 7%. In 2050, which is just 25 years from now, after the end of this year, Africa will have 25% of the global population. One out of four people will be in Africa, and they'll be in cities. And the population of Europe will be 7%. What does that tell us? We have an extraordinary opportunity to get right what they didn't get right, but also to use the new generation, the young people. Our median age is 19, Your Excellency. We have grappled with how to sort out issues. We've had unemployment, you know, disillusionment. I dare say that the biggest challenge to our security is not terrorism or al-Shabaab. It is millions of young, disillusioned, disengaged young people with ideas, but nowhere to take those ideas, and they're jobless out there. So it's an ex extraordinary opportunity that we must take advantage of. Indeed, it is our greatest resource. Now, in the ancient past, I was a legislator with uh, Senator Minister Kipchumba Murkomen, and there are two pieces of legislation I am proud of. One went through, one didn't go through. The first one which went through, um, that was in Actually, the second one, because the first was when he did 30% procurement. But the second one was the National Employment Authority, which we set up. It's thinking more than just doing labor migration, Your Excellency. If you look at the constitution of the board of the National Employment Authority, which we sponsored in um, two parliaments ago, it was to bring the people you have in this room together. In the board, you have uh, employers, you have manufacturers, you have academicians, you have, uh, you know, the universities together, the technical colleges together, and we deploy technology to let us know these are the number of young people out there without jobs. Then this is what they are studying, and then this is what the market needs. That mismatch of skills is a ticking time bomb. In many respects, all we are doing in our schools is postponing unemployment of young people by four, by five years, if you don't match it with, with uh, what the market needs. But secondly, Your Excellency, the one which I'm proud of by half was the startup bill. I'm proud of it by half because we didn't conclude it. We started it. There was immense public participation. Um, we involved the tech ecosystem locally and internationally. 
we benchmarked with countries that have done it before. Um, we called the biggest startups we had at that time in Kenya, the Cellulans, the Triggers, those that are about to become unicorns, and asked them, if you're to start again, what kind of support would you require um, from government to help you scale? We had to define what we call a startup, because if I just start frying eggs out here, it's not a startup. But we had to define it as rapidly scalable, tech-driven, technology-driven businesses that have the ability to capture a large, you know, uh, a big base of employment. It passed in the Senate that time. We really wanted to de-risk investors, this venture capital. They said many keep streaming. Excellency, the other time we were with Kaufman Fellows. Many of them keep streaming into Kenya because they see the potential of our young people. There is no amount. It is good to have a fund in government, but there's no amount of money that can be budgeted through our appropriation that can fund startups more than what venture capitalists can do if we de-risk the investment. And say if this percentage of your investment can be recouped if in the first three, four, five years the company you target doesn't make it. And that was really the aim. So I hope and my good friend Mwishimio Alice and of course our CEO that we can take it up. We started it, Your Excellency, you, you were directed that time under MSME so that we can connect them for us to move on with that legislation. If you have seen $473 million, I think, we've attracted in funding, ask yourself why and where is the limitation. We cannot reinvent the wheel. The countries that have made it have made it because of experimenting. We've seen very many beautiful innovations there, Your Excellency. And you kept asking the same question. How do we take it up? How do we scale it up? The countries that made it in the Industrial Revolution did not perfect before they produced. They produced and perfected while producing. We must move all these ideas into production and have practical experience as we, we fix the wings as we fly, Your Excellency. Finally, what we intended to do, which I think is a very novel idea that the government should think about, Your Excellency, is to set up a virtual special economic zone for these scalable startups that you define from wherever they are, if they meet the threshold, that then they can you know, create this kind of employment, they can be able to grow once supported, and once they get attract that funding, you cannot put them in a physical economic zone. The day of physical economic zone is waning, it's coming to a close. But there's a young person in, in his bedroom in Thika with a great innovation. There's another boy in Mukuru. There's somebody in uh, Eldoret. A virtual SEZ, Your Excellency, will rapidly change this ecosystem um, for the benefit of, of, of technology. So just allow me to congratulate Waziri Murkomen and the team in the ministry. We're very happy. I think since you got into the ministry, we've seen the energy and the vibrance. I don't know whether it is because you're a former senator or because you're young, but one of the two, you're doing, you're doing an amazing job in, in, in that space. Please count on us. I think the connection that is left is with the county governments. A lot of the innovations you've showcased there were the customers. You've shown us solutions in our markets, which we're solarizing. If you can help our you know, mothers and sisters and men be able to use that for clean cooking. I've seen an innovation on uh, a boiler that is driven by solar. Today, Your Excellency, the young people of Nairobi are very happy through the innovation. This technology, NFC device, start, uh, tap to it, is feeding 316,000 children every day in our primary schools in Nairobi. That is technology that is homegrown, home-built, and practical. So let's move to that level um, together. Your Excellency, without further ado, um, and I'm very proud as the governor of Nairobi, the capital of Africa's Silicon Savannah, to host this Innovation Week. Congratulations to Waziri, and it's my great honor and pleasure to welcome my brother Murkomen to address us. Karibu sana. Let's clap for him as he comes on stage. Your Excellency, President Dr. William Samuel Ruto, 